in. Let's hit it. SBTV Nation, it's your boys, the Dream and the Hatter in the house, live on YouTube, making it happen once again on a Wednesday. What's going on? Yo, it's Thursday, player. It's Thursday. You know what? As I said Wednesday, <laughs> I like stumbled through it because I thought it was, dude, I lose track of the days sometimes. Oh, me too, man. Especially, you know, when there's sports like seven days a week, you know, you, you, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, man. But No I doubt, man. Definitely gets lost in the shuffle. Um, real energized night last night I had is I didn't get involved in any type of sports. I didn't even peak at sports last night, dude. Really? I just took it easy. Um, the wife went out with the girls. I hung out with my boys. We watched like all kinds of old crazy clips and stuff that they wanted to watch. They wanted to do like crazy, you know, Christmas, you know, type movies and Skylanders and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I just hung out with them. We had a nice little cool boys night kind of hanging in the crib. Oh, that's cool. I had a subject later on in the show, but since you brought up Christmas movies, I watched one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time last night. Okay. Bad Santa. <laughs> Have you seen that? No, it's not. Oh, my God. Do, do you got, guys, tell the dream you need to watch Bad Santa, please. It's Billy Bob Thornton and um, the little, uh, I forgot his name. He's a... Um, uh, a midget comedian. I, I forgot his name though. He's he's in the. It's it's hilarious, bro. You gotta watch it. He's just basically like a drunk, and he goes to like all these malls, and they rob the malls and stuff like that. It's it's fantastic. And uh, gotcha. Bad Santa is definitely something to put on your bucket list as far as movies are concerned, guys. We are live right now on Twitter at SBTV Nation, and we're also on YouTube. And you can comment there on YouTube. My assistant's over there, rocking and rolling, and I am on Twitter, rocking and rolling. And the dream is as well, guys. Look Definitely. I, son, you know what? As far as movies are concerned, yeah. and cats may going to find this probably a little bit, maybe, I don't know, just uh, not, not, I shouldn't say disturbing, but may find it a little bit bizarre. I don't generally like comedies. Okay. Now, what, what I will do is if I'm laying around on the couch yeah. and something catches my eye that's somewhat funny, Yep. I'll leave it there and then I end up watching a comedy but as far as me turning a comedy on and watching it I generally don't because I I struggle with finding it funny and I mean even some of like like there's comedians that I absolutely love I like Chris Rock yeah as far as I'm concerned I think I I think Chris Rock to, for me he's my like number one comedy guy okay okay um I love his comedy because there's always like a political and like an educational there's more of it it's more than just standing up there swearing it's like a, a message underneath sure. the comedy and I, I i really love that um but his movies i've hated like i don't think i've even seen a chris rock movie that i even liked um you know just just been terrible and i, I that goes that goes with many of these guys I just don't like the, the con I don't find the movies funny, but I absolutely love stand up. I think stand up comedy is hilarious. I'll I'll go to stand up live. I'll watch stand up recorded. I love stand up, but the movies I don't like. But speaking of comedies, I do have to admit my all time favorite comedy, Super Bad. Super Bad's great, man. Dude, Super Bad. Is... I was in stitches. <laughs> stitches. Entire, yeah, man. I mean, Super Bad's definitely one, and the Forty Year Old Virgin too is is fantastic. I think, in in my humble opinion. But Super Bad, definitely, man. I stop. You know, from from the beginning to the end, you just yeah. laugh the whole time. Yeah, Super Bad was it for me. <laughs> Other than that, like I really don't do it. As far as Christmas movies for me, uh, I'm a little tradition. I'm a traditionalist. There's an Albert Finney Scrooge. It's real corny, like real corny. All right, yeah. it's an Albert Finney Scrooge where they singing it. Like I love all the songs. We put it on like Christmas Eve at my house. It's like a little bit of tradition. I sing all the songs, and my kids and my family look at me like I'm insane. They can't believe that I can remember all the words. And uh, <laughs> it's, that's that. That is my all time favorite Scrooge. I went to see it at. It was like one of the first. Mo well, not the first, but. I, as a kid, I went to see it at the movies, and anybody who goes and looks it up is going to be like, oh, my God, look how old the dream is. But <laughs> as a kid, we went to the movies, and it was, like, such a big deal. And I can remember that whole moment um, of going to see that movie as a kid because, guys, movies weren't like how they are now. For you, for you guys that are younger, like, back in our day, or at least mine, 
like going to the movies was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like going to a Broadway show almost. Going to the movies was like a big, big deal. You know, now it's like, we, you know, my kids are like, oh, can we go to, you know, like we go to movies, like we're poor. Can we go to the movies? You know what I mean? Like you plan like to go to the movies like a week in advance back in the day. You know, it was, it's, it's amazing how times change. Not to mention that now everything you want to watch once it comes out of the movies yeah. is like readily available to yes. you. You know, and, and it, that I mean, people talk about technology. I mean, you know how you know we haven't moved forward or the world's going crazy. But dude, when you think of techno technologically in your lifetime right now, where we're at now compared to like 25, 30 years ago, or in my case, maybe 40, we can think about. Dude, it's like light years. Of course. Of course. Just the fact that we are right now on YouTube live. Live. Doing this. You couldn't do this like 20 years ago. This is like unheard of. <laughs> I know, man. And uh, my bride and I actually drove by one of the big movie theaters. They just did the one in North Haven over. Dream. They got the reclining seats. Oh, no. I, they got I a, know. They got a bar in there. They've yeah. got like gourmet. Like, you know, you can get chicken wings and hot dogs and burgers and there's I mean, couches there's couches in there listen th sick. me and my wife tried to go, but it's like always sold out we tried to go there to see uh some movie over the summer yeah and like we couldn't get in there it was it's like always sold out we ended up going to see it at uh in wallingford well i can tell you right now come summertime i'm definitely going to see independence day the second one that okay. looks ridiculous man plug for them i guess as well so um <laughs> speaking of plug-in movies since we're since we're on the topic <laughs> i will be really glad when star wars goes in and kicks off because they have marketed the crap out of that movie. oh big time big time that's gonna be sold out for days so and, and good i want it to be sold out and i want them to get it out of their system over because i gotta be honest with you dude like i i want i will probably go see it yep. but i'm going i i am not expecting to like it i have not liked the star wars movie since Return of the Jedi. I haven't liked the other two prequels. Um, I, I, if you try to watch the original Star Wars right now, I guarantee you that they use that for sleep apnea testing because you cannot <laughs> get through. If you, there, you can, the original Star Wars you cannot get through yeah. anymore. It is like people will watch it and be like, "What was the big deal about this movie?" Yes, but. That's just to explain how to. That, that's another you know indication of how far the times come, and I think. I think that the times have kind of caught up with Star Wars is like there's been so many space movies and so many people have done so many innovative things with space movies that Star Wars is now like, okay, yeah, Star Wars, whatever. You know what sure. I mean? Like, it's like, like, that's how I feel about it. But we will see. Um, my boy G Money's been hitting me up because he wants to go and he's all excited about it. But uh, I don't plan. I don't plan on really liking it. But Superman versus Batman. Oof. Yeah. Absolutely. My man MC Money's here on Twitter uh, just posted a picture of the uh, poster of Bat Santa, man, for you. My man Marlon is listening live. What's going on, man? A lot of people on Twitter already dream in 196 countries worldwide, kid. I see Marlon said, remember how long it took to, to, took to get movies? I'd say, Marlon, I got one even better for you. Do, do any of you remember when you took pictures with a camera, all right? <laughs> you took that little roll of film and you mailed it away. Wow. It'd be gone for like five weeks or so. Like you'd mail your pictures. You'd be like <laughs> waiting for your pictures, checking the mail every day. Yep. And then your pictures would finally show up in the mail like a month to two months later. And you'd be all excited about the picture. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. That's beyond my day, player. No, no, it's not. Stop it. No, it's not beyond your day. <laughs> all right, guys. Back to the sports, man. We got to... <laughs> <laughs> just tried to play me with that. You remember that suck it up. I don't remember that. I'm dead serious, man. You used to I remember to the your You never developed your pictures like you do now. I, I I remember going to the place and picking them up. That's about it. I don't remember no, mailing son, them out. You mailed your pictures out. Oh, Stop. Get out of no. here. No, I remember You're the Polaroid. That That's about it. <laughs> oh, my God. This dude. You Uncle, just played me. Uncle Dream. You just played me, y'all. I'm going to call you Uncle Dream from now on. All right, man. Uh, going over to the this NBA. Cats out there that know what I'm talking about. Trust me. I'm a back y'all if you know what the dream's talking about and i know you're not that old 30s and you know what you're talking about you know what i'm talking about uh definitely all late, right man late, late 30s going over to the nba last night dream congratulations on your call with the miami heat that won and covered the spread 
rocked on, man. Hey, but I know D Wade was a game time decision that kind of scared you off a little bit, right? I didn't get involved because of that, and but yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk. I had a fun time with my dudes, so I could care less. Uh, yeah, the Miami Heat ended up making it happen. I thought the line was dead wrong, but look, they only covered by one point. Yeah, but they still <laughs> covered, man. Right, still got the job done. I got to say that the leans on the show yesterday were just, I mean, sizzling. Well, as Fire. I look down, I see the New York Knickerbockers in that, what was it, 13 yesterday? Yeah, something like that. And when I said that's not right. Well, I don't think they were given that much, but there were some other teams given a lot of points yesterday. Well, and they, they all won covered. by five. I know they didn't cover their spread. <laughs> Indiana <laughs> Pacers, man, late the smackdown by 26 points over the Dallas Mavs. Keep telling you, watch out. For the Indiana Pacers dream. Golden State Warriors come back yeah, in impressing. Team, What's that? I'm not feeling that Pacer team. You don't need to. Just let your boy do it. <laughs> you keep giving me the warning with them. I'm just like, okay, they're decent in the East, but I think there's some teams that are going to are gonna beat them, but we'll keep watching them. I, I don't think that they're the class of the East by okay. any means. I'm just saying that they are going to be one of the biggest pain in the ass moving forward. Okay. Speaking of a pain in the ass, how about the Golden State Warriors that just weren't having it last night? Won by 25 points over the Suns. Trying to start another little streak, man. Well, that was that to me. That was predictable. I mean, I, I didn't see. The, I didn't think they were going to struggle with the Suns. I don't think so either. But I got news for you, man. They're kind of calling out the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, Steph Curry was a little unhappy with the way they were um, celebrating after the victory when they broke the streak. Okay. So now the Milwaukee Bucks have to come into Golden State on Friday night, which is tomorrow night. And Steph Curry, and I quote, said, we were kind of laughing at some of the stuff going on. It was a big game for them. Friday will be a big game for us. So okay. I think he's putting out the warning. Speaking of warnings, I think he's putting out a warning to them, brother. And I think it's going to be kind of crazy what's going to go on in that particular game. What do you think the line will be, 20? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> no, no idea what the line would be. I'm not really good at. I don't really do well with guessing the lines. I don't know why. I, and I guess I, you would think because I money line everything. <laughs> I thought I thought I was awesome with the lines with college football until yep. I saw Michigan State getting like 13 points by the Ohio State University. That threw me way off because I thought that would have been like five and a half or something like that. But uh, okay. back to the NBA, the Spurs win their 23rd straight home game by beating the Wizards by 19 points, Dream. No doubt. And it, didn't they have somebody? I, I believe that they rested Leonard in Did that they really? game. Let me just take a look. We just quick. said that yesterday that this guy plays every day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, right? As soon as we Go said figure. it, he decided to rest. No, he, <laughs> wait. Uh... Yeah, no, he played. He played. All right, yeah. He, 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 they don't give that cat any time off, I man. thought his first name was Rashad, though. Oh, Kawhi Leonard, man. Kawhi, I'm sorry. Kawhi, it's Kawhi. Yeah, right. No, he played. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, uh, looking at that, and, you know, as far as the NBA is concerned, got a lot of games tonight, which we're going to talk about. Is it me, about. or does Pop seem to rest his guys on the road? Um, Really good question I, I there. think I've noticed the resting as far as road is concerned. I mean, I know that they have rest a couple of times yep. at home, but for the most part, I think that his resting situations have been on the road. We got to take a look into that. Sugar Shane Redenius, if you're out there listening, I know you probably know that. As he's usually really entrenched in the NBA. Uh, if you could holler back at your boys and let us know what if, what type of information you have on that, that would be a little bit helpful. Um, you didn't mention the Bulls, by the way, beating the Grizzles. Oh, yeah. Good game they for them. They put the smack down on the Grizzles player. Grizzles are up and down, though. But so were the Bulls. <laughs> Good point. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I thought I thought that was an, that's an impressive win on their part as far as I'm concerned because, um, you know, I, I that's a game that, you know, you want them to win at home. And sure. they came through and they did. Uh, and even though the Grizzles are up and down, they seem to be right at, at like the same type of quality as yep. the Bulls, yep. so to say. Yeah. So I was, I was real interested in seeing what the outcome of that particular – game was was going to be very similar teams in my opinion that right yeah exact that's that's what i'm saying almost like mirror images of each other actually exactly <laughs> you know what i mean because you got the uh gasol brothers going at it yep and you got um you know a little bit of defense there and the whole package you know some perimeter shooting you know as far as butler and um the other guy there that broke his face last year i can't think of it it's off on the tip of my tongue uh for the uh for that particular team, man. But looking at this as far as uh, college basketball, going to go into this. UNC, North Carolina gets the job done and wins by 24 points over Tulane yesterday. 
and I think they were given 23 and a half. So if you were on that, congratulations for covering by a half a point, Dream. What a stomach ache that would have been, huh? No, t- uh, listen, that's why I, I didn't like it. Um, I thought, was it 23 and a half? I thought it was 20. I thought it was 23 and a half last night. Okay. Last I checked, took a look at it. And Baylor laid the SmackDown 104 to 59. Wow. I did mention that LSU team. They got busy themselves. Uh, ended up winning by double digits as well. Um, and which was, uh, I wanted to get a look at them. And I did not get a look at them uh, last night. As I didn't do any sports last night. Just hung out with my guys. Um, other than that, on the recap, I don't think there was Arizona. Did you see Arizona score? Oh, yeah. 92 to 37. Nice. Not bad. I think they let North Arizona know. 55 55 point win for them, man. I think they let North Arizona to fall back. Um, Very interesting score over there. And you guys getting involved with that college hoop. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there. I mean, everything has its time, has its space. Guys, the one thing you guys got to understand, I think if you've been watching us and listening to us and paying attention to anything we do, you know, I had a great day on Tuesday, so it was all about, you know, pulling back. You know what I mean? It it was uh, once you I'm not trying to run back up in there and, you know, give give everything back. Yes. You know, keeping things in perspective. We always preach balance. We always preach trying to, you know, distance it out and take it easy and not, you know, trying to burn it out. So uh, I know some of you guys hit me up with the DMs. What are we on tonight? What are we on tonight? I'm like, dude, we just won last night. Real big. Let's uh, take a break tonight. Take a little break. (laughs) You know, I've always wondered this. Are, Are you guys that are out there gambling? Are you in it for the action? Are you in it to win money? A lot of guys, there are guys that are definitely in it for the action. For the action. Definitely. For the action. I definitely know. And I I got a couple of friends who I who are probably listening that know I'm talking to them. I tell them all the time, you bet just to have something to do. Right. <laughs> right. And, and guys, you know what? Hey, me personally, and I mean this sincerely, I play to win. I want to win money. I want to pay some bills with, with the books. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I roll with that particular situation. I used to do it for the action a long time ago, Dream, when I was younger. Right. Not anymore, I man. play to win, too, but it's always recreational, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, like I pay to win until I build up, you know, a specific amount maybe in the account. Yeah. And then I'll start, like... All right, well, look, well, well, I'll be like, well, hey, there's look at this much in here. Well, I got this bill over here. Let's see if I could get this much more and then I'll pay this. That's kind of how I get down with it, you know? Yeah. But in the beginning stages, till I could get the account, you know, beefed up a little bit, yeah. Um, it's more recreational. But, but still, not like just to have something to do, though. No, you know of I mean? course not. I don't do that. That action thing, I'm not really about that. <laughs> I think that particular style could get you in trouble, though, that, that, that action thing. So of course. be cognizant of that, guys. If you're just, you know, feeding to play a game because you're bored right now, then you might want to give a call to somebody. Yes, fall back. Exactly. Uh, moving forward to a couple of other subjects here, the NFL. So I guess there was a little, uh, little interview with Cleveland Browns coach Mike Pettin, and he said that Russell Wilson is not, in his opinion, not one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. And what a, I mean, the media is obviously hyping this because Cleveland has to go into Seattle this week where they're a 16 point underdog. Yikes. You know what? NFL and a lot of times <laughs> trash talking and even like as I alluded to watching the um, the Fab Four yesterday when yep. I talked about that in Fab Five, watching that movie. Yeah. They talk about trash talking and things that are said to try to get in people's heads. Okay. Bill Parcells was a good was you know was good at that. Jimmy Johnson, another one. I think if you look at some of the greats, the greats also played mental warfare with with their opponents to try to get a mental edge. And I don't know if that's what this coach is involved with and in trying to get, but he's definitely brought you know some some mental into the into the you know into the picture with this. Uh, as far as Russell Wilson, you know. I'm not sure what it's he is he based it on his body of work as a pro or basing it on this season because I mean if you want to base it on this season he's definitely one of the top quarterbacks if you base it on this season the last um, five games anyway well not even that I'm just saying because a couple of the top guys are not there this season I mean you can't put if you want to if you do a top ten based on this season 
Like, you can't put Peyton Ball in there, and you can't put Breeze in there. Right, good point. So that's two out of the top ten right there. So I definitely could implement. I mean, Romo's out. Yeah, right. You know what I'm right. saying? So Russell Wilson definitely moves up the bar, you know, as far as, you know, a, an effective, you know, quality quarterback. So uh, I don't really know what he's talking about, to be honest with you. But I think I do understand what he means about Russell Wilson yep. a little bit. Like, it, like, it's something about Russell Wilson for me as well. I don't know. Like, I just, I like him, but he's not my guy. Got gotcha. you. You know, he's not like, he's not like, like, like there's... There's some others like sub. There, there's I don't know. It's I, I'm there. You know what? I'm I kind of understand what he's saying, but I wouldn't say that. Well, you know they're gonna ask um, Mr. Wilson about you know those comments. Right. If I was Wilson, I'd be a complete wise ass, and I would say that he is one of the elite coaches in the in the history of the NFL, and just kind of walk away. You Russell kinda... Wilson, uh, unlike, <laughs> unlike the other guy that runs around, uh, Russell Wilson is not. He doesn't add that. No, kind of, he doesn't. He he he's, he's a, definitely he's a class athlete, a class you act. You know what I'm saying? A very polished. Uh, and, and 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 I I will be so happy to see Russell Wilson make the other guy that runs around look a little silly and knock him out of the playoffs. My man Marlon's uh, talking about me having some futures on the Pacers. <laughs> well, you know he does because he keeps talking about it. Marlon. <laughs> Not yet. I still got to get a better look at him. I, I've been watching him, you know, night in and night out now and kind of been pretty impressed with what I've been seeing out of that man. Move, speaking of the NBA, guys, going back to that, former three-time All-Star Gilbert Arenas, did you see the comments he made about the WNBA got everybody up in arms? No, oh, but the fact that wow. you're bringing it up, Whoa. <laughs> he's that, uh, he's my that, man that went, secret I did. My man went a little, little extreme with this, and I, I think he's definitely wrong i mean what what nasty comments he did he posted a video on instagram of uh girls you know they were like in thong bikinis and stuff like that shooting who kind of alluded to the fact that this is rather this is what he'd rather see in the wnba uh he actually referred to them as uh let's see some are cutie pies and others are ugly and comparing them to, he compared them to some of the cast members in that jail show Orange is the Orange new black. Orange is the new black or something like that, oh, yeah. Oh, man. That is brutal. What a way to kind of uh, give yourself bad press, huh? Gil, you know, Gil, I think Gil just likes being up in the, spot, in the spotlight, man. Oh, you know what I mean? unbelievable, dude. Like, but I, what, uh, what was his interview? Like, why did this even come out? No, like, he posted what, on was, Instagram just for the hell of it. Th that's what I'm saying. So he's got to obviously want attention to do it like that. Of course. That's what they all do, man. They say sometimes no, no press is bad. But I think that is pretty bad press, man. That was just kind of classless for him to say. And, and WNBA put out a statement and said that um, Gilbert Arenas' comments are repugnant, utterly disrespectful, and flat-out wrong. WNBA players are strong, talented, and determined individuals who give it their all on the court and serve as inspiring role models to millions around the world. They should be celebrated for their accomplishments, not disparaged with ignorant insults. You know... I'm not even getting involved in this one. I know. You know, <laughs> I do want to say something, though. That the WNBA needs to do something more to kind of jazz up the sport. I get I, I don't agree. With, guys, don't take this wrong. I don't, I, I don't agree with anything this dude is saying. How what you know uh, being arenas, but I do think that maybe if they were like if they came out and were like strong, <laughs> Gil went about there in like leggings and, and high heel boots. <laughs> no, here, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking with the WNBA. Number one, you get yourself like you know, like the Laker girls, or you know what I'm saying. You do something like that where you have like you know the cheerleading type dancer so, you type know, situation. I'm, I gotta be honest with you. I'm I'm not like. Like the, I sh I forget it. Go ahead, you talk. All right, <laughs> about but, to get myself no, but, in trouble. No, but I'm saying so. You, so you you take that, you add that into the situation. Then what you need to do is like Raphael came on. Uh, Raphael Spars. Why? Hold on, show. wait. They don't they don't have female cheerleaders. I don't in think so. WMA already? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know if they do. I mean, I, I you know they should really... have male cheerleaders. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. They right. have those cats that be at the college games always holding up the girl. We at still, their we still got to get one of them cats on the show. I want to, I want to pick a male cheerleader's brain and see what they got. You know, what, how they do it, why they do it. You know what I mean? So that's kind of funny. But another thing I think why is they that do it. It's a scholarship, son. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> By the way, why they do it? Free another, college. Hello? Another thing I'm thinking is, yeah, well, there's, there's probably other uh, added incentives. Oh, there. no doubt, there's other added incentives. <laughs> you know, you get to go on uh, trips with all kinds of women but i think that another thing is they really should push and be pro sports gaming and gambling for the WNBA. i think that would drive a lot more interest into the sport and i think they would uh do you know i think they would increase their ratings substantially with that i don't know like i said you know and and, and, and we talked about this before I, I mean um about the sports you know they could say that but you know it's not gonna this, to, gambling needs to be opened up. The politicians are the only people who can talk about gambling that right. it's going to be relative as yep. far as I'm concerned. Whether the sports say they want it or they don't want it, I think it's irrelevant because they're not the entity that's making it happen or not. It's got to be, you know, it's got to be the politicians because it's written in the fabric of law that has to get this thing happen. And it's been very quiet actually as of late um, about that. Maybe I got, maybe I got, maybe somebody should write because he got the biggest mouth going on right now, and this is definitely not an endorsement for him. But maybe somebody should get Trump involved with it. <laughs> I said that. I said that a long time ago, man. When he first started running, you know what I mean? You know. Uh -huh. It's probably something to. I mean, that would definitely fuel the economy throughout the country. But we talked about listen, that. I don't know times. how it's skated, how it's skating by. No, uh, understanding the amount of money that is involved. I don't understand. And every state is crying broke. Yeah. All right. I don't understand how that money is out there, and the states are not like, hey, listen, we we're gonna get this implemented. This is it's free money. Free money, baby. I mean, it. To think about what it 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 creates jobs. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, I do know this. There, there's a slight negative aspect of it, as obviously, you know, you're promoting gambling or, or so to say, and, and some people, you know, it can be, you know, detrimental. But it, you're selling alcohol. Yeah. You're selling cigarettes. Right. You know. So I don't. I, I, I don't know. Like I said, it's 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 free money. I don't understand why every state in the country is not on, hey, we want this. We want to add this to our economy. Sure. I don't get it. Sure. We'll see what ends up going down with it, man, because you know it'll keep resurfacing over Oh, and no, over it definitely is going to keep resurfacing, you for know? sure. So moving on to uh, let's see what our next subject is. Uh, let's talk about Las Vegas for a minute, man. We are trying to get down there in March, guys. We actually have. We have appointed – Dr. Dan, the evil genius, as our chief events officer for Las Vegas. So he is looking around. He's got a big proposal put together. Real, real good stuff, man. Great itinerary, the whole package. We're just shopping it out there, man. And we need we need to get a decent amount of people to come with us to make it work. So, guys, listen. If you are interested in a potential Las Vegas trip with us in March for March Madness, Hit up the evil genius and let him know that you're interested, man, because I'm very excited about it, and he is. I mean, this dude, he worked like nine hours on a proposal yesterday, Dream. Cool. The evil genius. So he's definitely a team member as far as having the uh, the passion to make this thing work. He's definitely dying, and he's trying to, uh, you know, get this thing bigger and better and more badass than the last event that we okay. had, man. So looking very much forward to rocking and rolling with the Evil Genius in Las Vegas, along with 196 countries of the SBTV Nation, man. Definitely. Looking at this. So, Dream, we got a little game tonight, man. Yes, we do. It's a stinker. It is. It's a stinker. We've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming into the St. Lucia Rams tonight, and Speaking man. of Dr. Dan, he's got to be torn on this particular <laughs> matchup. It's two of his favorite teams are squared <laughs> off against each other. Oh, my God. I know. I know. So let me pull up the uh, line and see what we got out of Las Vegas as far as the game tonight in the NFL. Pulling it up. Just give me a second, guys. It is a stinker, as we alluded to earlier, and we have got the St. Lucia Rams who are given two and a half points with an under over of 41 points to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I understand the line, Dream. Okay. T uh, St. Louis coming off the big win last week versus Detroit. Tampa Bay coming off the loss. I looked at it. It opened up at minus two. Now it's minus two and a half with St. Lucia being favored. And there's your, there's your line movement right there, player. Okay. <laughs> 
Looking at it, I think St. Louis gets the job done tonight. we got to look at a couple of things here while we're breaking this game down. What's your thoughts on famous Jameis coming in versus that defense, brother? I like him. Um, I actually don't think St. Louis gets the job done tonight because I haven't liked the gameplay out of their quarterback and their offense. But I have liked <clears throat> what I've seen out of Winston. I mean, it. it I didn't like him originally, yep. and I wouldn't like him if it wasn't the Rams. But I like him versus the Rams. Um, you know, he's he showed me. You know what? He's pretty much been this season to me. Kinda, it's it's just picked right up for where he left off in college. Yeah. Um, you know, mistakes kind of bail out at the end of the games. All that's been applicable yep. in his case. So you know, I, you, I, I'm still, I've liked what I've. You know what he has? He showed me an ability to win games. Yeah. That's 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 what I need to say. He showed an ability to win games. Okay. Um, I, but ugly games. Okay. You know, he's he made he's made his mistakes. Um, he hasn't been perfect. Um, he's thrown some bad interceptions, uh, but he has shown an ability to win games, and he has shown to me an ability to lead, which is another important facet um, to be an NFL quarterback. So I believe that he is definitely a team leader, and I, I expect him to improve over the next few years. Okay. Um, I definitely think I think that they found a great guy that they can build their team around moving forward, Tampa Bay. But in regards to this, you know, this year, you know, not really. I still think it's a success for them because I think they still, you know, have moved forward in that respect and definitely have something to look forward to the future. Now, as far as this game is concerned, I mean, I think it's going to be a very ugly game, but I see Tampa Bay um, winning the game. I just do. I think that their offense will be able to do just enough to get this win here. You know, when I look at it, I did not realize this, but Tampa Bay is in the top half of all of the NFL as far as offense and defense, uh, as far as yards per game are concerned. Defensively, they are number 11 in all of the NFL, and offensively, let me just pull it up, they are number 11 offensively as well. Right. And when you look at the St. Lucia Rams, their offense is absolutely putrid, man. Averaging 16 points a game, Dream. 16.2 to be exact. Number 31 as far as yards per game, man. So my boy Caveman just tweeted out under, and I absolutely agree with that. 100%. I absolutely agree with that. And I, In fact, I think in this particular game, I believe a two-team teaser, Tampa Bay and the under, is the word for the day. So you would get Tampa Bay plus, if it was a six-pointer, you get them plus eight and a half with an under over of, what is the line here? It's uh, 41 points, so you get that under 47. And if it's a seven-pointer, you're going to get nine and a half and get an under of 48. That my friend is probably the better way to go here. Yeah, Pick I like the, the I like the teaser on in this in this particular app, application uh, for this game. I think that would be very successful. Well, you know, when we talked about guys playing just for the action, right? This is probably a game where they'd be playing for the action dream. No, not necessarily. Well, I don't I, I don't think not well, maybe, but my thing is I'm pretty much an NFL, you know, NF I, I pretty much would get down with the NFL um connoisseur. There's you're an NFL, you NFL connoisseur? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not. It's it's very few NFL games that I wouldn't get. In, you know, especially if, if it's the only game on. Like, there's games on Sunday that I don't get involved because they're not the only game on. But if it's right. the only game on, you know, I don't think that I've missed. Have you missed any NFL game? No. I don't think I have either. No. So uh, I, I would say it maybe works a little bit different as far as the NFL is concerned. Got you. Gotcha. So that's kind of where we're leaning right now, guys. If you, I mean, you never have to play. You never, never, never have to play. But if you were to play this game, let's say somebody offered you a free play or something like that, probably a pretty good move to get Tampa Bay. And I think the Rams, Rams find a way to win the game. But I think if you get Tampa Bay plus the eight and a half or nine and a half, I think you'd be in pretty good shape, Dream. Yeah, I, I think like you it. will too. I just don't like this Ram team. Just doesn't do it for me. I don't like their offense, uh, with the exception of Gurley. Um, but I think the Buccaneers will be able to put eight in the box and slow him down a little bit. I don't think he's gonna go crazy. Uh, and I definitely don't like them throwing the ball. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. I, I like the Buccaneers in this spot, but I, I like the teaser even more. I think the teaser is the safest way the to teasers, go. I think the teaser's right on. Right. To be honest with you, and I'm looking at this. Uh, we're looking at the. 
Rush defense for Tampa Bay is number eight in all of the NFL as far as uh, yards per game, 94.1 on average. So they might be able to stop Gurley and force him to throw the ball. Yeah, they might. So we'll take a look at that and go from there, guys. We're Like I said, we're live everywhere, man. We're live right now on YouTube and... We're live on Twitter as well as Spreaker and SBTVNation.com, man. So I think that's pretty much it as far as that's concerned. Stinker game, guys. But, hey, it, like you said, Dream, it is the NFL. And before you know it, blink of an eye, boom. It's going to be gone. gone. It's going to be gone. And uh, Dream will be entrenched in baseball season. <laughs> and that's Dude, I just got to say that the baseball numbers, the numbers floating around at baseball that they're giving these guys yeah. that play baseball – you know, this is the thing to me, like, I don't want to hear these guys with the I'm not a role model and your parents should be raising you because my thing is, you know what, like, the money that these guys are making, meanwhile, you got people at McDonald's, like, trying to get, you know, $14 an hour or whatever they're trying to get. I don't know what it is, but yep. not not getting paid enough. And then you look at these guys making, like, a hundred and some odd million dollars, yep. you know, to play sports. You know, that starts making, you know, like, it's... I know we are involved with the sports world and we look at it too, but you know, for people, everyday living type of people, do you know how much money these guys are starting to get now? Big, big money. I mean, like big, this is why like, like, like remember the other day when LeBron took that day off on Sunday? I'm like, why? Yeah, I know. Like, like what's up with that? Like, go play. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care. Go play. That's why I'm like, you know what? If you get an injury, you know what? Go play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got cats with no insurance. All right. Cats don't show up at work, don't get paid. Yep. Okay? Regardless. Kids sick, they're sick, whatever, don't get... They got to go into work, all right? Making pennies. You got million-dollar athletes out there making all this freaking money, and they don't... Listen, I don't feel... Sim Andrew Luck, guess what? I don't... You know what? You got to... Your kidneys bust up? Guess what? I don't feel bad. Go play. Oh, uh, I, I don't know about that. You got to get I'm just the saying, doctors. dude, I, that's, the, that's the position where I'm getting at now because the money is just too much. Money's too and much. It's our fault because we're bu we're buying it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, it's just, it's out of control. You know, you got regular families that can't afford, you know, to take their family to an event. Mm -hmm. All right. Meanwhile, you got players out there making, you know, 200, you know, 100 million. I mean, it, it's a hundred million dollars. A mil million dollars to start for a pitcher. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, th that's <laughs> ridiculous. You know what? Somebody said the other day that they could line up all the $100 million guys in baseball, and there'd be like 20 guys that you don't even know of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's insane. Hey, man, you know what? They're, Meanwhile, they're, you got people starving yeah. and, and, and homeless, and some of that is their own fault. I'm going to say that, but still. You know, it's just, it, it to me, it just is a bad taste. It's, it's a bad, it, it, baseball, it's unfortunate they got to put it out and they got to let, you know, make it public. But some of these contracts that these guys are getting, man, are just like ridiculous. So, like, get out there and play. Get out there and don't get in trouble. If you get in trouble, throw them off the teams and that's it. Whatever. I don't feel bad. I'm like, I'm starting to get to the point where I don't feel bad for nobody. Gotcha, man. Now, uh, so, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of uh, athletes that do not get paid, let's talk about, well, just real quick. That college bowl season starts this Saturday, Dream. Oh, no doubt. There's like five games on the ticket, and then what it does is they're going to take Sunday off. Obviously, they're not going to compete with the NFL. Then they should, Monday, we're exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, boom, college bowl games, man. And then it just goes on from there. And I haven't even looked at it yet as far as the SBTV 500 contest between myself, you, and the evil genius. I know he's already he's he already told me he's got plays ready. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> that's, not, that's no shocker to me. I'm like, Dan, really? <laughs> My boy. You should have let him go ahead and do the Army Navy. That would have been you guys would have both lost that right out I of know, the gate. I know, I know. I was giving 22 in that, and they barely won the game, man. <laughs> ah, nasty, nasty. But hey, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, guys, we do our bonus shows on the weekends at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it's audio audio only. It's not on video, so but we're looking forward to it on the weekend, man. Uh, as far as the NBA, I'm going to shoot over there, Dream, unless you got anything else before I do that. I don't. All right, so move it over to the NBA. Looking at three games on a ticket and one that is absolutely going to be a phenomenal game tonight. And I'm looking at the Oklahoma City Thunder coming into the Cleveland Cavaliers. And Cleveland Cavaliers are minus three points with an under over of 205. 
My boy's got Shumper back. Does not have Kyrie yet, but they're getting excited over in Cleveland, Dream. They're ready for Kyrie to make. I, I just hope Kyrie doesn't come in and then get injured like a month later. Because you know he's injury prone. He's I almost do. He's almost like uh, D. Rose. I, you know, I, so, I, you know, I mean, they're going to have to. I don't know how you monitor that situation or whatever, but you got to give it your all when you're on the court. Yeah, and you, you were do. talking about pro injuries and stuff like that. So we'll see what ends up going down with that. But as far as tonight's game is concerned, he is not in the lineup. But this is a huge spot for the Cleveland Cavs. Uh, they did they did not play last night. They played the night before in Boston. You know, traveled home, did their thing. My boy LeBron in big spots loves to shine. And you know damn well that all the media is going to be all over this game tonight. It's probably going to be televised, I would imagine, if you look at it. So On TNT, brother. I would expect... I would expect, like, your A game out of both teams tonight. I think Kevin Durant is going to go crazy. I think Russ Westbrook is going to go crazy. I think that LeBron James is going to go crazy. The key ingredient here is obviously getting Shumper back involved and making sure J.R. Smith isn't throwing up 100 threes. And you know what? I got to see some more out of Kevin Love, man. I have to. I have to. Because there's some situations. I mean, last game he was apparent, but some of these situations, it's almost like he's waiting for LeBron to do all the work and kind of sitting back. Ah, I don't know. That kind of bothers me a little bit about Kevin Love. He's a center. I know, but he's just sitting back, like not really doing much. You know what I mean? Well, like, I mean, he's got to be. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's not the Chris Bosh type. He's a post. He's a post type center. Yeah. Um, for the most part. So, um, I, actually, he's not really the center. I, I say he's a center, but he's not really More the like a power forward. More power forward, center, I should say. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. Yep. But still, I mean, you know me. Like, when a guy is seven, like, it's, if, when, when you're, like, if you're six, I should say ten for me. Yeah. With the exception of Kevin Durant. As far as I'm concerned, you should be in the post. <laughs> right. With the exception of Kevin Durant, uh, which is and, and I guess you could say Dirk. There's a couple of you know a couple of anomalies throughout the NBA, but Love is the but I see Love's game. He he doesn't create his offense. To, as far as I'm concerned, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. He's got to be fed. So if he's not getting fed, then it's not happening. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That's just, I mean, it, it, that's just, see, LeBron is that phenom that is unfortunate. You know, fortunately for him, he can create his own offense and he can be fed. Right. You know, and I I don't know if that's what you're looking for out of Kevin Love, but that's not really him. Here's my feeling of what happens with Cleveland in the first halves. I feel like LeBron tries to get everyone involved. You know what I mean? He'll be like taking it to the hole and then pass the ball. You know, dish it out to Delavadova or Verchow or whoever's out open or whatever. And then they fall down all the side. And if they, dude, if they fall down big to OKC, they're not coming back in this one. I can tell you right now. But you, you could fall down to teams like um, the Trailblazers or the Suns or something like that and come back and win. But OKC, that's not going to happen. So I disagree with that. Really? I think you can come back on OKC, yes. Really? Because OKC, I told you before, they're powered by two guys. And as the game wears on, yep. they, they get tired. Okay. I definitely think you can come back on OKC. All right, got it, man. Got it. So I'm looking at it tonight, and I think that Cleveland gets the job done. The three points, I think you're safe laying that. But, I mean, this is just a lean, guys. I got to really look deep into this and see what's going on, see who's playing, look at the rosters, look at the excitement, you know, read everything about it with the um, with the beat writers and all that and see what's going on as far as that's concerned. But I'm leaning Cleveland Cavs to win this game tonight. I think they come out and try to make a statement. They did make a statement versus the Boston Celtics. They did let them know that they are the class of the East, though. You know what I mean? So that's right. definitely something to take a look at as far as that is concerned, man. So, all right, Dream, any other NBAs that you want to look at? Because there's only two other games. No, I don't like any of the games in the NBA tonight. Um, I would like Charlotte, but I haven't liked how Charlotte played, uh, especially last night as the, the Magic did beat them. And um, big ups to Direct Sports Solutions. They were on that particular matchup. Um, I think the loss for Charlotte has hurt them, so we got to keep an eye out on them. Yes. So I don't particularly like that matchup tonight. Um, and I do actually, you know what? Uh oh, don't do I it. Know. Don't do it. I know. No. <laughs> Big ups to my man. Uh, who was that from Hong Kong, Kelsey? That was uh, Sabo Guy Eight from Hong Kong saying good morning to us. 
What's up? I don't think he's on it. You got Wu Tang in the back. Oh, going. yeah, you already know that. <laughs> Definitely. Let's switch OJ it up. OJ I know you out there popping your head to that beat. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, yeah, you got Lake Show in Houston tonight. What's that spread out of Vegas you got there? Oh, man, it's um, Houston minus six with an under over of 213 and a half. A lot of controversy going on with, um, what's his name there? Harden. Yeah, no, not with Harden. With, um, with your boy that laughs all the time. Dwight? Dwight Howard. But what's the controversy? Because you don't want to play? He's not getting a ball. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> they must be winning. <laughs> <laughs> he's not getting the ball, man. He's a little upset, but there's. I'm so tired of him, dude. He, I wish he would just go away. Um, <laughs> um, no opinion on. I'm that. not even gonna get involved. Nah, you know, I, I, I want to lean the Rockets, but the Lakers, you know, they don't like obviously him, so they'll be up to try to play. Um, and they should be up to play any game anyway because they have been horrible. Yes. So, yeah, I'm not going to get involved with this. The Rocket team hasn't quite been winning like they should be, and the Lakers definitely aren't winning like they should be. No. So, uh, I'm just going to leave this one alone. All right, sounds good. Uh, any other NBA before I move over to the ice? That's abs that's it? That's all the NBA all here is? All right, man. So, I see a game that's sticking out at me that okay. I'm kind of feeling, and I'm looking at the Calgary Flames who have won six games in a row, surprisingly, Dream, going into the Dallas Stars tonight. You know how we feel about this Dallas Stars team. We love the Dallas Money. Stars, but... <laughs> well, Minus 230 tonight. Love the Dallas Stars, but I think I'm going to... Because you know how they... I always do that. They're due to lose. <laughs> they're due to... They're not due to lose. They, they just won uh, one game after a loss. And right now, Calgary is playing pretty hot, but I like Dallas to win this particular game. Dallas in the caps right now, man. Unbelievable the way they're playing. Both teams. I'm a, I, I'm I'm gonna watch. You're gonna watch that one, huh? Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. My my spidey sense is tingling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I for some reason I don't know. I don't like this game. I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's got that too easy feel to me. Except when the Dallas Stars are up like four or nothing in like the second. And then yeah. all I need is the all I need is the text from you and then no lose. <laughs> I don't think so, player. I'm gonna go. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna just fall back for this game. Um, I do like the stars. You know how I, I roll with them, but at sometimes you just gotta get off the train. Um, let's see what else we got. All right, man. I'm looking at it. Uh, great game in the uh, ice as, as far as the New York Rangers going into the Minnesota Wild tonight. Minnesota that should be minus. a good game. Nowhere near that. Um, you know what I do like, though, guys? I think that I – and I haven't played with them for most of the season. I think I'm going to get a Chicago Blackhawks to try tonight. I think I kind of like Chicago Blackhawks tonight. You got the Oilers coming in town. I haven't really messed with the Chicago Blackhawks, who, by the way, have quietly kept pace with the rest of the good teams yeah. in, in hockey. Uh, this is definitely a team – you know, they go into the playoffs, which most of hockey makes it into the playoffs anyway, but – I mean, don't let's not forget about this team as they're defending champs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. My man Louis Salazar's out there from Punta Cana listening in on the beach, kid. No doubt. Uh, That's I'm what's up. Jealous, bro. Jealous. Je I gotta get like a, a green screen back here and put myself at the beach too. How about that? <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that I think you might be okay on something with that particular game. I mean, when you look at uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, just pulling them up here, uh, they just lost their last game. They're 17 and 15. Dream. The juice went from 195 all the way to 230. Yeah, I'm a, I, I like the Blackhawks uh, in this particular matchup. And, I have, and I've stayed away from them for most of the season. So yep. keep that in mind, guys. Is that sometimes is tricky when you stay away from And I'll be up here screaming tomorrow, oh, see, I didn't touch them all season, and now I do touch them and they get me. But <laughs> um, I like the Chicago Blackhawks. I got to give you guys one more. And I know you guys are going to hate this, uh -oh. especially after what we got, after the mess we had the other day. But I got to be honest with you. I think I'm going to give the Flyers another shot against the Canucks. You you cashed with them. I did cash with them, but it was an ugly cash. It was really <laughs> ugly. It was an ugly cash, but I think I'm going to try to get involved with them because, like I said before, uh, Jim Rome was a douche pointed it out, and I happen to agree with him. The Flyers have been physical. Um, they're definitely on that bottom half of the of the you know the, of the hockey of the hockey teams that bottom tier I'd say the the yep. C tier. But out of the C tier, I think they're the better team of the C tier bunch. And okay. this is a home game. You know, Canucks are coming in. I always say this: a, a game that they should win and need to win okay. because they should win it. Yep. 
and they should be very focused because there's like certain teams that they're just not going to beat when they come into their house. But this is a team that they could beat. So I'm going to lean the Flyers. All right, man. I don't see anything else that's really tickling my fancy here, brother. Um, I'm looking at it here, and I'm looking at, you know, I mean, and, and what I've noticed, guys, in hockey is that there's a lot of parity. I mean, there's, you got some really good teams, but it, the, I mean, the lines are definitely commensurate of this, is that you, anybody could be anybody at any time. I mean, the puck could just go anywhere. Goalie gets knocked into, and boom, you know, <laughs> knocks the goal, the, the puck into his own goal. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff that goes on here, and I, I never really notice really extensive losing streaks, like over like seven games. Right. Usually a team can come out and win a game, you know, after losing like three or four or two yep. or one. You know, so, I mean, it's definitely something to get involved in as far as uh, looking at some patterns and trends and stuff like that. Guys. That's why I tend to lean home teams as yep. well okay. because I think that you're a lot safer with your team at home. Yep. And somebody, I'm sure somebody out there has got the stat on it. You know, one of you guys, I'm sure a member of the nation has the stat of home teams in regards to away teams, what statistically is working out better. But um, I just feel like even though, you know, I struggle with, with hockey home home ice advantage i've talked about this before um but still i i have i don't really like messing around with teams on the road um gotcha. especially in hockey um gotcha. i don't like it in general but hockey especially um however that being said i am going to give you one other lean tonight and got? that is the new york islanders who i don't know if you've been noticing are yeah. quietly re-emerging back oh, yeah. to what they used to be yeah um you're getting good gameplay out of Tavares is stepping up his game um and which i think he's one of the obviously one of the stars in in, in um in hockey uh so keep your eye on this range on this islander team yes. i like them against this avalanche team and the abs have been playing a little bit better too as of late but i think the I think the Islanders will go in there and get it done. I probably won't get involved in it, but it's a slight lean. But I would definitely stay away from trying to play the Avalanche in that particular case. I'm probably going to roll with my thoughts and my recommendations. Um, options would be Blackhawks, Flyers, two-team money line parlay. And it probably doesn't pay. probably pays pretty decent. Oh, dope. Yeah. Dope. So, and I think almost you're almost looking at the Islanders kind of taking place of the Rangers right now as far as, you know. Well, uh, yeah, well, very, very similar, games. and I think what's going on with them is very similar too. Is you saw the fall off with the Islanders, and now they're you're, now they're reemergence. And I at that time the Rangers were playing at a high level, and now you're seeing them in a little bit of funk. And I mean, like we said, this goes on over the course of a season, so it's something to definitely be cognizant of and, and as we move forward and watch what's going on with them. So, um, yeah, you're absolutely right with it. With these two teams, these two teams are very similar. Islanders and Rangers, very similar teams. I, I just, for some reason, I think I give. Well, no, nah, I should, cause, cause I like the Rangers as goalie, so. Eh. Very similar teams, though. Gotcha, man. So that's pretty much gonna do it, Dream. I mean, you do have a. Uh, how about your boy Fifty Cent, crime bro? Oh, son. I don't know if you guys are aware of that little situation, but uh, 50 Cent's crying broke. I guess he's getting back taken to court. Um, he happens to be. Uh, the, the girl that's with Rick Ross was with him. Leah and I Galore. guess she's trying to get some money. And yeah. <laughs> she's just making her way through everybody with Lou. <laughs> making her rounds through all <laughs> the top rappers with money. <laughs> and, of course, they're welcoming her. We're open arms as the intelligent individuals that they are. <laughs> I, I, would, I would welcome her, too, to be honest with you. But go ahead. Oh, men are such suckers, boy. We got <laughs> we are such suckers. <laughs> Starting way back to Adam, who Eve yes. got him to eat the apple, and then Eve ate the apple, and then was like feeling guilty and had Adam do it. So here, you get a piece of this. And yes. of course, like a sucker, he went and ate it. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. So that's pretty much it, guys. We appreciate you tuning in and listening to us and watching us or whatever the hell you're doing out there. And looking forward to a great weekend coming up, Dream. There's a little bit of college hoop going on, but I didn't see anything nah. of note um, that was all that tonight. I know um, I think West Virginia is playing. I don't know if you guys are involved in that, but there is a little college basketball. I'm not in that in that landscape or in that area but if you guys are get involved with, be careful make sure you do your homework like we always say uh, we got the NFL game tonight we're looking at a teaser on that side the seven of oh, the seven point faction we're looking at the Bron the, the Buccaneers um, two team teaser with the Buccaneers and the under and the we're under. liking that yes sir yes sir just because of the awful 
offense that the St. Lucia Rams put out there, man. So, all right, Dream, what you got to do to close out of here? Hey, let's get out of here. I'm going to thank everybody that's retweeted the show. It is our fashion here, and we try to be, you know, as we're going to try to be as, you know, as diplomatic and as customary um, as our signing off. We're going to use that a lot to, re you know, to, to thank you guys. So, yes. um, I want to thank Louis Salazar, Holidays Out There, Key MVU, Immaculate, Benjamin Rowe, Jonesy, Joseph Del Rosario, Long Wu, Vegas Girl 92661, my boy BT, JDH24, Lucas Wilbanks, Mind Funk, INT, P for Press, Spot Bet, Direct Sport Solutions, Nick Arrestus is out there to pick, J Cass, Sirot King J, OJFB, J Gots, Jeff Ryan, Jason Riley, Vegas Jack, MC Money, Irvin, Heavy365, Rich Raven, Woots GG, Cash Action Bets, and Marlon are all in the house. Guys, thank you so much for your support and your continued support. Louis Salazar, the beast looks dope. I was just there not too long ago. Um, so I know you're enjoying that. Look at that beautiful weather. Look at that beautiful sky. Yes. Looks, looks nothing like what I'm looking out outside my window right now. Right. But um, that looks incredible. As always, guys, I am the dream. Always remember who you with. Make the most of each and every day as you cannot get this time back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guys, we are the biggest show in the world having an absolute ball every single day. 196 countries strong. Hashtag Tag SBTV Nation, SBTVNation.com. We love you to death. Go out there, go easy, do your own homework, get involved in all your own plays, make all your dreams a damn reality, and get that money. Let's go!